Hello, I'm Elitza, and I'm here today to talk about how to improve your sign-in and sign-up experiences with the latest web technologies. It can be challenging to make these flows as seamless as possible for your users, and at the same time ensure security is at the highest level. Passwords have been around for a long time, but they're a pain for your users and a liability for you as a developer. 81% of hacking-related breaches are caused by weak or stolen passwords. Strong passwords are difficult to remember, so many people don't bother creating strong passwords, or they use the same password for everything. Password managers help here, but not all users rely on them. In a recent survey by Okta, two-thirds of respondents reported feeling overwhelmed with the number of usernames and passwords they have to manage. That's why today, I want to talk to you about how passkeys can help us move away from passwords and the headaches associated with them. We'll go over the state of support and how to go about implementing passkeys on your sites. Next, we'll talk about Federated Credential Management API, or FedCM, a new privacy-focused web technology that allows users to easily sign up and sign into websites using their existing accounts from trusted providers, such as Google. FedCM doesn't rely on third-party cookies. This is especially important as Chrome plans to phase out third-party cookies and has restricted them for 1% of users since January 4th, 2024. FedCM is evolving and will cover new features like the Multi-Identity Provider API. And finally, I'll tell you about exciting new technology that's going to enhance security on the web. Device-bound session credentials tackle session hijacking to better protect your online accounts. Let's get started. Passkeys provide an easier and safer way to sign into websites and apps without using passwords. A passkey is a unique cryptographic key pair tied to a user account and a website or application. On sites and apps that implement passkeys, the browser or operating system shows users a prompt to create a passkey. Users only need to use the screen lock on their device, such as touching the fingerprint sensor, to continue. There's no need to type or remember anything. Then, to sign into an account, users are simply shown a prompt to unlock their device. The browser and operating system ensure that each passkey can only be used for the same service it's created on, making them phishing resistant. Unlike with passwords, users can be tricked into using their passkey to sign into a sketchy app or website. Sites that implement passkeys as an additional sign-in method are seeing a number of benefits, such as higher sign-in success rates, reduced sign-in time, increased conversion rates, and reduced costs of separate two-factor authentication solutions. The number of apps and websites that support passkeys keeps growing and includes PayPal, Kayak, and Amazon. Amazon customers find it easier to sign in with passkeys compared to passwords and codes. Google Accounts users feel the same, and 64% of them find passkeys easier to use than passwords and two-step verification. Passkeys are not just easier to use, but also significantly faster than passwords. For example, Kayak implemented passkeys and saw signing time reduced by 50%. Passkeys are already supported on most operating systems, such as macOS, iOS, Windows, and Android, and browsers, Safari, Firefox, Chrome, Edge, and other Chromium-based browsers. Passkeys work on both apps and websites, and can be backed up and synchronized across devices via credential managers, tools that act as digital vaults for your sign-in credentials, like passwords and passkeys. If a user gets a new device, they can recover all their passkeys by signing in to the credential manager on their new device. On Android 13 and below, users can save passkeys in Google Password Manager. And starting from Android 14, users can save passkeys in their preferred credential manager. Other companies have similar syncing capabilities for passkeys created on their operating systems. Passkeys created on Android that are stored in Google Password Manager are encrypted on-device 
and synchronized so that they are available across users' Android devices. However, the same passkey isn't available on Apple, Windows, or Chrome OS devices, even if you're using the same browser like Chrome. We're working on making passkeys from Google Password Manager sync to these devices by the end of 2024. For now, if you're signed into Chrome on both an Android device that has a passkey and the Windows, Apple, or Chrome OS device that doesn't, you'll get a push notification on your Android device to use the passkey and be able to sign in on the other device. In other good news, starting from Chrome 123, Chrome users on Android 14 and above will be able to use passkeys from third-party credential managers. The feature will be rolled out gradually, while full third-party credential manager support is under active development. The ecosystem is working hard on making signing in with passkeys across devices and platforms as seamless as possible. In the meantime, when you want to sign in on a browser on a device that doesn't have your passkey, you can do it by scanning a QR code with a phone that does. With growing support and a steady stream of improvements, now is the time to invest in adding passkeys to your sign-in options. We have published code labs and guides which cover how to implement passkeys in web apps and server-side guidance. You can find them all on passkeys-web. It's linked in the description. While these code labs walk you through step-by-step -step implementation, there are also a number of libraries available that can help you get started. There are many things to consider when choosing a library, and we have compiled a list of criteria that can help you make a choice that's best for you. The list covers consideration across library features, security, user experience, developer experience, and more. So make sure to check out that link in the description. But don't go yet. I have more to tell you. Passkeys are great for streamlining signing, but before that, your users need to sign up in the first place. That's where Identity Federation is great, streamlining the creation and recovery of accounts. Identity Federation delegates the authentication of an individual to a trusted external party, an identity provider, or IDP. A relying party, that's your website, relies on an identity provider to provide the user an account without requiring a new username and password. With Federation, developers can give friction-free account signup, leveraging the security investments of trusted identity providers. Identity Federation has played a central role in raising the bar for authentication on the web. However, some Identity Federation providers still rely on mechanisms such as third-party cookies. Third-party cookies have been used to enable critical functionalities on the web across sign-in, fraud protection, advertising, and embedding rich third-party content in sites. But at the same time, they're also the key enablers of cross-site tracking. To protect user privacy, browser vendors are placing restrictions on third-party cookies. To facilitate testing, Chrome has restricted third-party cookies for 1% of users from January 4th, 2024. Chrome plans to ramp up third-party cookie restrictions to 100% of users, subject to addressing any remaining competition concerns of the UK's Competition and Markets Authority. As Chrome is working on phasing out third-party cookies, identity providers that are affected may be able to adopt FedCM to mitigate the impact of these changes. FedCM API is a privacy-preserving approach to federated identity. Websites and apps can let users sign up seamlessly and securely with their accounts from a third-party identity provider without third-party cookies. FedCM is available in Chrome and Edge since version 108. Mozilla is prototyping it in Firefox, and Apple and Brave have shown some directional support on this specification as well. Federated identity solutions are not the only ones affected. If your website has a sign-in flow that relies on third-party cookies, you may need to take action as we approach their deprecation. Now is the time to test your identity-related user journeys for any breakage when third-party cookies are restricted. The best way to do that is to enable the test third-party cookie phase-out flag in Chrome 121 and higher. Then make sure to check for breakage of user registration, 
password recovery, sign-in, and sign-out. If you're using an open-source single sign-on solution or a third-party provider, check their documentation or reach out to them to see how upcoming changes affect their solution and what approach they recommend. If you have your own solution that relies on a separate sign-in domain, there are a few possible migration paths. Changing your infrastructure to have all sign-in flows go through the same domain and use first-party or same-site cookies. Implementing FedCM so your sign-in domain could act as the FedCM identity provider and be used to authenticate users across your other domains. Or using related website sets to enable limited cross-site cookie access between a small group of related domains. We have compiled everything you need to know to transition away from third-party cookies in one place, the 3PCD link on the screen, which you can also find in the description. If you're using Sign-in with Google as your identity provider, I have great news. The latest Google Identity Services Library, or GIS, is ready for third-party cookie deprecation. It has migrated to FedCM in April 2024. For most developers, this migration occurred seamlessly through backwards compatible updates to the GIS library. Some websites with custom integrations may require minor changes. These developers will have until third-party cookies are restricted by default to make changes to ensure flows are not interrupted. Developers still using the deprecated Google Sign-in JavaScript library may need to migrate to the newer GIS library. Sign-in with Google provides frictionless user experience and delivers great conversion for developers with trusted identity attributes such as name and verified email address. It includes features such as auto sign-in, one tap, and personalized button, all now supported through FedCM. Sign-in with Google also supports passkeys, which can reduce your reliance on passwords. To learn more about how Sign-in with Google can help you build seamless cross-platform identity journeys, Check out the Android session on passkeys and identity best practices. Other great examples of FedCM adoption are Times Internet, India's largest digital products company, and DNA, a Japanese provider of mobile portal and one of the largest social gaming platforms, MobaGame. They previously relied on third-party cookies to maintain signed-in user sessions across different sites, and they have now successfully migrated to FedCM. FedCM is under active development, and there are many exciting new features coming. For example, Multi-IDP API enables users to select their preferred identity provider out of a set of options that the relying websites choose to support. We believe the Multi-IDP API is going to be great for users who have accounts with more than one identity provider, give them more choice and control. Continuation API allows identity providers to use custom pop-up windows for gathering additional permissions, providing more flexibility in how they explain permission requests to users. Another new feature is the button mode API. Currently, FedCM gets automatically invoked on page load as a widget on the side of the screen that does not prevent the user from interacting with the website. The user can choose to ignore it. And if the user is not signed into their identity provider, this UI will not be shown at all. With the addition of the new button mode for FedCM, users can be offered a button to sign in to the relying party with the identity provider, moving from a passive widget to a user-initiated action, which improves both user experience and website control over the authentication flow. FedCM will continue to evolve and aims to best meet user and developer needs, so make sure to participate in the origin trials, raise any issues you run into, and give feedback. There's a lot more work happening to enhance identity management, privacy, security, and trust on the web. While restrictions on third-party cookies are coming, first-party cookies will still remain an important mechanism for maintaining user sessions. One of the major risks with that is cookie theft, where malicious actors can use stolen cookies containing your credentials to access your sensitive online accounts like banking, social media, and email. Device-bound session credentials, or DBSC, is a web technology that aims to improve online security and privacy by tying the user's online session to a specific device. This means that even if a session cookie is stolen by malware, 
it becomes far more difficult for an attacker to use it on a different device. Device-bound session credentials allow sites to keep using authentication cookies, but with much shorter lifetimes, in the range of a few minutes. Before it expires, the session automatically refreshes the cookie after cryptographically proving to the server that the user is still on the same device. Chrome is developing this capability as a web standard in collaboration with popular identity providers and browser vendors to ensure it's practical to deploy on both small and complex sites like Google.com. We're prototyping it right now between Chrome on desktop and Google.com and plan to collect candidates for origin trials towards the end of 2024. That's all for today. We will continue to work on developing technologies that help users seamlessly and securely access their accounts across the web. Let's recap what you can do to improve your sign-in and sign-up experiences today. Consider adding passkeys as an authentication method on your sites and apps. By implementing passkeys, you get better security, a better user experience, and happier users. We have published resources to help you get started, which are linked in the talk description. Chrome is dedicated to both protecting people's privacy online and giving companies and developers tools to build thriving digital businesses. With third-party cookie restrictions on the horizon, make sure you're ready by auditing your identity-related user journeys and migrating away from any third-party cookie dependencies. To learn more, see the I.O. session, what you need to know about third-party cookie deprecation. And if you're an identity provider who wants to provide a privacy-focused federated identity solution that's integrated with the web platform, then you should implement FedCM. Check out the origin trials to get involved with the latest features. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.